Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Lord Jesus, make us worthy to celebrate the exaltation of your glorious cross with sacred hymns and with psalms. When you appear on the last day, and the sign of your cross will shine brighter than the sun, Gather us before you and surround us with your eternal light, that we may raise glory and thanks to you, to your Father and to your Holy Spirit forever. Amen. Peace be with the church and her children. Let us raise glory, honor, and praise to the Savior who made the wood of his cross a strong fortress for his flock and established it as a sign of the covenant for the salvation of his inheritance. By his cross he exalted his church and gave joy to all people who believed in it. To the good one be glory and honor on this feast and all the days of our lives and forever. Amen. <clears throat> o Christ our God, by your precious cross you have given us perfect salvation, and you have made us worthy to celebrate this feast with hymns of praise proclaiming. Blessed are you, O Lord of the Holy Cross, for you erased Adam's curse and restored his banished children to their inheritance. Blessed are you, O Holy Cross, for you united heavenly and earthly beings. Blessed are you, O Holy Cross, for you fulfilled the words of the prophets, enlightened the apostles in their preaching, crowned the martyrs for their faith, and honored the confessors for their loyalty. Now, Christ our Savior, we ask you with the fragrance of this incense to make the celebration of the feast of the exaltation of your holy cross a sign of security and peace. By your cross, exalt your holy church, Guide her shepherds, adorn her priests with virtue, purify her deacons, help the elderly, educate children, direct the youth, protect orphans, care for widows and grant rest in your dwellings of light, to our brothers and sisters who have died hoping in you. May we find refuge in the shadow of your cross on the great day of your second coming, that we may raise glory and thanks to you, to your Father and to your Holy Spirit forever.
Christ our Lord, accept these prayers and the fragrance of this incense that we have offered on the feast of the exaltation of your holy cross. May its sign always be visible before our eyes to strengthen us, that we may walk with you toward death, and then stand at your right hand to celebrate the feast of your eternal victory. We glorify you, your Father, and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. God is shant, And they give us the mysteries through the power of your cross. Lord, your cross is a ladder leading us to heaven's eyes. May your church and her children join the angels host on high. A reading from the letter of Saint Paul to the Philippians. Glory to the Lord of Paul and the Apostles. May the mercy of God descend upon the reader, the listeners, and upon this parish, your children, forever. So join with others in being imitators of me, and observe those who thus conduct themselves according to the model you have in us. For many, for as many as I have often told you, and now I tell you even in tears, that they conduct themselves as enemies of the cross of Christ. 
Their end is their destruction. Their God is their belly. Their glory is in their shame. They mind the things and are preoccupied with the things of this earth. But our citizenship is in heaven. And from it, we also await a savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. And he will change our lowly bodies to conform with his glorified body by the power that enables him also to bring all things into subjection to himself. Therefore, my brethren, whom I love and for whom I long, my crown and my joy, in this manner, stand firm in the Lord, my beloved. Praise be to God always. Savior announcing life for our souls, we offer this incense and ask for your mercy, O Lord. Shlomo el Chulchun, from the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Saint Matthew, who proclaimed life unto the world. Let us listen to the proclamation of life and salvation for our souls. <clears throat> the Lord Jesus says. If any man says to you then, look, here is the Messiah, or there he is, do not believe it. For false messiahs and false prophets shall arise, and they will perform signs and wonders so great as to deceive, if this were possible, even the elect. Behold, I have told it to you beforehand. So if they say to you, he is in the desert, do not go out there. If they say, he is in the inner rooms, do not believe it. For just as lightning comes from the east and is seen as far as the west, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. Wherever the corpse is, there the vultures shall gather. And immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened, and the moon shall not give its light, and the stars shall fall from the sky, and the powers of the heavens will be shaken. And then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven, and all the tribes of the earth shall mourn. And they shall see the Son of Man coming upon the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he will send forth his angels with a trumpet blast, and they shall gather his elect from the four winds, from one end of the heavens to the other. This is the truth, peace be with you.
and they will gather his elect from the four winds, from one end of the heavens to the other. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This gospel today in chapter 24 of St. Matthew is about being led astray and being gathered in. If you read the whole chapter, you'll see that our Lord is talking about, as he often does, a number of things that are overlapped. One is the aspect of the end of the world. That's pretty straightforward. The time will end at a moment when the Christ appears in full glory. But it is also overlapped with a reality that is every generation. The idea of remaining on a path that is illuminated by truth and not being deceived by false Christs and false prophets. And our Lord says, don't be surprised, the most intelligent people will be deceived by these signs and wonders. And he says so much to the point that even the elect, in other words, those who are foreordained, that are going to be in the beatific vision, even they would be deceived if that were possible. Shortly before this text, our Lord talks about the suffering and the agony that will go on in those last days. He says that this will be so horrific that all flesh would be destroyed. In other words, everyone would die from all the events that will take place at that final shuddering, which will end time when our Lord appears. And he says, but for the sake of the elect, those days will be shortened. They won't go on that long for the sake of the elect. Everything in creation is for the sake of the elect, for the sake of those who are created in humanity, who are actually going to fulfill the function of what a human being is supposed to be in the image and likeness of God. And so he talks about the agonies, the birth pains being shortened because of the elect, and then he goes on with this text immediately. So do not be deceived by the false prophets and the most messiahs. You need not run after them. Not in the desert, not in the inner rooms, not anywhere. Not close, not far is what he's saying. Because you have this faith that has been given to you. And you know that it has the ability to heal, but it is a process. And so it is a purging that takes place during these days. And so on one aspect, it's pretty straightforward of being led astray, allowing our lives and our minds, our spirits to be darkened by, as St. Paul says, the God of this world. What is our supreme source and goal in existence? For many people, it's their retirement home, the 401k. You know these things. This is the mantra of the modern world. We live by terror. You have to buy insurance because you never know what's going to happen. You have to have all of these things because you have no control over the future. Well, even after you pour tens of thousands of dollars into your insurance, you still have no control over the future. And our Lord precisely is pulling us back to be able to understand that it is at this moment in time, not of fear, but of understanding the centrality of the eternal good one. And that is the other aspect of the gospel today is of the gathering in. So if you look at this gospel as it's quoted today, it's in basically two sections. The first part is about the present and being deceived, the false Christ, the false prophets, their signs, their wonders, all the things that they're going to do, all the things which they have done, and all the things that will still happen in generation to generation. And he finishes that section by saying, but there were the corpses, the vultures shall gather. Which is very odd. And when we think about it, what our Lord is saying is using the image that everyone knows has ever lived anywhere near wilderness. I suppose the people who live in the bunny hutches in Manhattan have no clue. But everyone who lives in any kind of rural area or at least touching rural areas will know that when they see the hawks, the birds of prey, when they see them circling, you know something is either staggering along in some field someplace or something has just died and they will be swooping down. And our Lord says there were the corpses. He's talking about himself. 
that the eagle shall be gathered to him, the vultures will be brought to him. They will come because this is where they find nourishment. So it's a rather unusual image, but it is the gathering in. It is our Lord saying that he who is the living bread, eat my flesh, drink my blood, that there where the body is, the vultures will gather. That's generation to generation. By sitting here, you are being gathered in. You drove here, obviously, physically, but you are being called to be gathered into the word incarnate. And by the fact that you make the effort in the midst of a collapsed and, and really quite fallen world, and in many cases, demonic world, the fact that you make the effort in that land of darkness and come is an indication that you are struggling along that path to gather around the body to receive your nourishment. It is the gathering in. The second gathering in, when I saw with a trumpet blast, the Son of Man shall send out his angels, and he will gather, notice the terminology, he will gather his elect, all of those who are destined for this vision, because of God's call, of course, and also because of their fidelity. Remember, for God, there is no future. There is no past. There's only the present. God sees us each a hundred years ago. God sees us 10 minutes ago. God sees us at this present moment. He sees us 15 minutes from now, and he sees us a hundred years from now, all simultaneously in every single moment. That for us are stretched out past and future. But even as you know, the present is moving. The present when you were brushing your teeth this morning is gone, it is the past. That present is always something which is now, but even by saying now, by the end of the word now, that now is already gone. And so God lives in this eternal present in which all things are seen. He sees us right now, a hundred years from now, either in hell or in heaven. He sees all of it simultaneously because there is no future for him. So the angels that go out in the midst of all of this chaos of the stars falling from the sky and the powers of the heavens being shaken with a trumpet blast, all part of the commotion that will take place. And the commotion that takes place is because the world is not disposed to grace. It is fallen. So amongst the fathers of the church, you have things that are called the principles of the discernment of spirits. And you learn how to observe the subtleties in your Catholic life of whether you're on a right track or the wrong track, or whether the thing that is haunting you that you just have to do is of God or is of Satan. And so they're known as the discernment of spirits. But one of the principles is in disposition. That when the grace of God, when the good spirit comes to an individual, who is of good disposition, then Saint Ignatius of Loyola says, like a sponge, it absorbs the water. It receives because of its disposition. But when the disposition is not there, then the grace, like, a ro like the water against a rock, will just splash off. And that splashing, that violence, is because there's not a disposition. So the world is fallen. It is under, our Lord says, the prince of this world. Well, the prince of this world is Satan. And when Satan leads our Lord in his temptations before he begins his public ministry, he shows him all the cities of the world and he says, these are mine for, to give to you. All you have to do is adore me. Acknowledge me as truly being leader, which is all the word prince means. Acknowledge that I really am in charge I'll give you all this power. You want to be the Christ? You want to be the Messiah? Terrific. Think of all the media and all the campaigning you'll be able to do if you control all these cities. So go ahead. All you have to do is just kneel down and just accept that I truly am leader, prince of this world. St. Paul will go so far in his letters to call Satan the god of this world. St. Paul, when he's writing about, to the Philippians, he says, well, I lament to you about these Catholics whose God is their belly. They think nothing about than food. And whose glory, the things they glory in, actually is their shame. The things that they should be embarrassed by objectively 
are the things they find the most glorious. And he says, I've told you about these Catholics before, and now I tell you again in tears. They are the enemies of the cross of Christ. This is why at that trumpet blast, the gathering in of the elect, from the four winds, our Lord says, from all the corners of the world, they will be gathered in. That is a historical moment. But as we said, the gospels often overlap the present moment and something in the future because they both reflect the same reality. When we live in each generation, our Lord's desire is to bring us in, to gather us in. It's not the idea of waiting for something to happen. It is not the idea that somehow by dying, I've talked about this often, we use these silly phrases these days, she's in a better place. You don't know that. And just because she died, she's exactly the same person she was two weeks ago. If you thought she was a son of a gun then, she's a son of a gun now. It's just now permanent. Death doesn't do anything to us. And it is not the end of the world. Which always sounds funny to pagans. Death is not the worst thing that can happen to you. And so by dying, dying is just part of what is part of human existence. So no, we don't go to a better place if you're not in a better place before you croak. We don't go to a better place because we're not in a better place before we die. And that is the gathering in. Do not be deceived. Do not run after this and that and this and that, creating your own version, calling it your religion, my spirituality, but I'm not religious type of thing in the modern world. Our Lord says, way ahead of this time, this is what human beings always do. We hanker after novelty. Tell me another good story. Ooh, these crystals will make me healthy. Oh, this is great. All of the kind of silliness which always leads to superstition and ultimately the blindness of the prince of this world. And that is why the world, which is in itself fallen, the world is redeemed as it is introduced into the order of grace. That's why when you read the fathers of the church, what the beauty of nature is not wilderness. It's the tilled field that feeds people. It is the vineyard. It is the things that have been brought into the order of grace that have been redeeming this fallen world. But the world, the cosmos as such, the entire universe is infected by original sin. And that is why when our Lord appears in the sign of the Son of Man, appears in the heavens, everything goes into convulsions because it can't receive it. It is why in the reading that we had yesterday, that in the, the book of Revelation, the people at this moment will run to the caves and under the mountains and call out to the mountains, crush us, hide us. There's no calling out to God. In the book of Revelation, nobody converts. Read it. The good become better and the bad become worse. They don't call out to God, there is no conversion because at this moment when everything is going into convulsions and the sun is darkened and the moon turns to the blood red color and the stars fall from the sky, all of these things are obviously word for word poetically describing the massive convulsions of the cosmos because it is not disposed to receive the grace of God. And in the midst of all of this cosmic convulsion in the trumpet blast that will be heard by all of the billions of people on the face of the earth, the angels go out to gather those who are already gathered in, to gather them in now in historically and to bring them into that moment of glory that St. Paul says to conform our lowly bodies, these things that can be infected by leukemia, cancer, COVID, and he says they will be transformed to be made like his body of glory. This is the resurrection. And so it's a gathering in. And this links together what we have spoken of before, that we live in two forms of time. There is a chronological time. The Greeks use two terms, chronos and kairos. And chronos is the word we have in the English word chronological. It's just the tick, tick, tick of the clock. It's just a measurement of that flow of the now, before and after. And that we have no control over. We are all going to be dead some point. That is very clear. 
And yet, there is also at every moment for those who have ears to hear, as our Lord says, kairos. And kairos is the notion in the Greek terminology of a moment of opportunity. Kairos is your time now. This is your time, grab it. Enter into it and understand what the opportunity is. Those people who follow the prince of this world and just go from moment to moment, week to week, who just live, whatever it is these days, binging on Netflix or whatever silly thing we do to waste time. That this aspect is what makes us deaf to Kairos, makes us deaf to the ability to reach and to be touched by the moment of grace. That is why in this gospel there are two overlappings, one of time for the future and one of the gathering in, not of the historical future, but of the gathering in at this present time. And so between these two, what we do from day to day is to call upon the grace of God so that it has the ability to gather us in. And that's why there's two images in this gospel, being gathered in by the angels from the four corners of the, of the world and the vultures, the eagles, that surround the body of their nourishment. The body of the nourishment is what you're gathered in in Kairos. The elect at the end of time, that is chronological. And so both of these times are juxtaposed and overlapped so that we ourselves be transformed in that grace of vision. And so it's something that we must ask our Lord that we see more clearly. And understanding that redemption is a process, we understand that our lives must be different than they were last year at this time. And that they should be different next year at this time than they are now. Either by death, because it will be over, or that we have entered more profoundly into that kairos of each moment, so that each moment of kairos is not wasted, but transforms us, gathering us in. So may the Lord God enlighten our spirits that we may see these things more clearly and that our ears be opened. And as our Lord says, that those who have ears to hear, let them hear. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen.
baptism for the forgiveness of sins. Tell what Madame Hegalo, Albota, Lord, and Farita, you. When you so go, I will talk, you will buy talk with good, Hayek, Lord, go the show. Lord in God, you accepted the offerings of our ancestors. Now accept these offerings that your children have brought to you out of their love for you and for your holy name. Shower your spiritual blessings upon them, and in place of their earthly gifts, grant them life and your imperishable kingdom. As we remember our Lord, God, and Savior, Jesus Christ, and his plan of salvation for us, we recall upon this offering all those who have pleased God from Adam to this day, especially Mary, the Blessed Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her spouse, the Chosen One, our Holy Father, Saint Mary, Saint Jude, and Saint Dionysius. Remember, O God, the children of the Holy Church, our fathers and mothers and our brothers and sisters, both the living and the departed, especially those for whom this sacrifice is offered for the intentions of all the members of this parish. Remember also all those who share with us today in this offering. Continue with the anaphora of St. John Chrysostom on page 876, 876. 
Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Lord God and Father, holy and glorious is your name. You deliver those who love you from all that is contrary to your will. May we who have remained in your divine love be made worthy to give you one another to give one another the greeting of peace with a holy kiss. May we always speak words of peace, think of peace, and work for peace. Through the grace of your only Son and his love for all people, we raise glory and thanks to you, to your living Holy Spirit, now and forever. Peace to you, O holy altar of God. Peace to the holy mysteries placed upon you. Peace to you, O server of the Holy Spirit. Let us give the greeting of peace to our neighbor with love and faith that are pleasing to God. from all creation. You are peace reconciling those who are enemies. You are forgiveness to those who sin. You are comfort to those who are sorrowful. Open the door of your mercy to our petitions and in the abundance of your grace accept our prayers. Make us children and heirs of your kingdom through the grace of your only Son and his love for all people and through your Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. O Lord, you are adored by all angels. Bless you, humanity exalts you and all creation glorifies you. Look upon your children who call out to you with purity and holiness May we offer you an acceptable sacrifice that we may raise glory to you, to your only Son and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The love of God the Father and the grace of the only begotten Son and the communion and indwelling of the Holy Spirit be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. And with your spirit. Let us lift up our thoughts, our minds, and our hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord with reverence and worship him with humility. Truly it is right and just to thank, adore, glorify, and bless the majesty of the one consubstantial Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, a majesty that does not need our glory or become greater with our things. O Lord, those who sing your praises are countless, and they cry out with angelic voices and with sweet melodies proclaiming.
Father, for you have exalted our weak human nature. In your mercy you sent your only Son into the world for our salvation. He dawned from the Holy Virgin like a ray of light from a bright cloud. He took the form of a slave, yet truly he is your Son of your Majesty. He willingly became man to make us divine. He was born from a woman's womb, that we may be born again from a spiritual womb. He became our brother, so that through his grace we may become your children and heirs. He took us from being slaves and made us your children. He promised us a share in the reward that allows us to call you Abba. He cleansed us from our sins with his precious blood that he poured out for us. For he is your only son, Kuri Eleison, Wabiyamo Haldaktum Hashad in Lema Bethayen, and Sabe Lachmo Mira Kori Shanto, Uparahu Kodesh, Waksoya Bertalmida Koromaran, Sabe Hula Mene. Kulukum <laughs> Kanno <laughs> Dach lo faikun, wach lo fsagiyen, et e shadu metihem. Pulsoyon, chambe wa hoyed an qailam alamin. Amin. Do this in memory of me. Each time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you remember my death until I come again. can comprehend that you willingly emptied yourself of your divine glory, who can explain your miraculous birth from a virgin, who can repay you for your saving passion which you freely endured, who can praise your plan of salvation for us. We can only ask of you, O lover of all people, that this sacrifice which we have offered be accepted on your altar in heaven, the dwelling place of your hidden divinity, in the company of all the angels and saints. Through this sacrifice, may we be worthy of the forgiveness of our sins. When you come to judge the living and the dead, do not pass judgment upon us, nor deny us, saying, I do not know you. On that glorious and fearful day, do not separate us from you, nor cast us out of your paradise to a place of weeping and gnashing of teeth. Rather, because of your holy name by which we have been called, look with mercy upon us. In your compassion you have made us worthy of the gift of your forgiving body and blood. So make us worthy to be one with you in holiness, as you are one with your Father. For this your church implores you, and through you and with you implores your Father, saying, Your 
sinful children, receive your graces. We thank you for them and because of them. a pledge of the life to come, a body that grants us the everlasting joys of heaven, a body that renews our souls and bodies, a body that purifies us of all sin for eternal life. Amen. And that the mixture in this chalice, the blood of Christ our God, be a blonde that gives new life to those who receive it, a blonde that guides us to the safe harbors and the dwellings of light, a blonde that renews our souls and bodies, a blonde that purifies us of all sin for eternal life. O oh Lord, in your great mercy, when this body and blood is mingled with our bodies and souls, Grant that it may be for the pardon of faults and forgiveness of sins and for the everlasting joy and eternal life with all your saints. Amen. We offer you, Lord God, this pure and holy offering for your holy, Catholic, and apostolic church, which you have redeemed. Gather her children into unity, love, and faith, and guide them in peace and security. We offer it for the pure bishops of the true faith, Francis, the Pope of Rome, Bishara Peter, our Patriarch of Antioch, Gregory John, our Bishop, the Venerable Priests, the Chaste Deacons, the Pure Subdeacons, and all the Orders of the Church. Teach them the word of truth so that they may spread it faithfully with justice and holiness. May they care for the flock that you have entrusted to them, Give them the proper means to accomplish your will and grant them a long life. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the sick and the, po the poor and the dejected, for orphans and widows, for the sick and the distressed, and for those tempted by evil spirits, be the guardian and refuge of their lives. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remember the Holy Fathers, prophets, apostles, preachers, evangelists, martyrs, and confessors, especially the holy, glorious, and blessed ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of God, St. John the Baptist, the messenger and forerunner, who witnessed the betrothal of your holy church to your Son, Glorious Saint Stephen, the Archdeacon and First Martyr, and all who pleased you and professed your name, we pray to you, O Lord. For all the faithful departed who have gone to you from this altar and from every place throughout the world, grant them rest in your heavenly dwellings with all your saints. And in your mercy forgive our sins and theirs. O Lord, do not deprive us of your mercy, but keep us in the palm of your hand, lest we fall and go astray, so that we may walk on your paths, follow your ways, and do your will. Forgive us and our departed, and pardon all sins and transgressions hidden and seen, committed with or without full knowledge. Make us worthy of a faithful Christian death that is pleasing to you, and join us to your righteous ones and to those who have done your will. 
that in all sign and all things your blessed name may be glorified with the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and of your living Holy Spirit, now and forever. of your eternity and he accomplished his plan of salvation for us that we may come to you may we call upon you with the prayer that he taught his holy disciples saying our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom and the power of the Lord are yours. Yes, O merciful Lord, we ask for your compassion. By your grace, make us worthy that your glorious name may be made holy in us. That your kingdom come to assist us in our weakness, and that your will dwell within us. Deliver us from all difficult temptations, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, with your only Son and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Shlomo el Chuluchun. O Lord God, you are good and the lover of all people. Look upon those who bow their heads before your majesty and bless them with every spiritual blessing. Do not turn us away when we approach your divine and holy gifts, and let us not be guilty of unworthily receiving the body and blood of your only Son. Rather, make us worthy to share in your holy and life-giving mysteries with purity, that we may raise glory to you, to thanks to you, to your only Son, and to your good and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The grace of the Most Holy Trinity, eternal and consubstantial, be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. Amen. Holy gifts for the holy, with perfection, purity, and sanctity. Make us worthy, O Lord God, so that our bodies may be sanctified by your holy life, and our souls purified by your forgiving blood. May our community be for the forgiveness of our sins and for new life, O Lord our God.
thank you, O Lord, who has blood for giving us your body to eat and your living blood to drink. O lover of all people, have mercy on us. Lord Jesus, you have made us worthy to share in your holy body and in the cup of salvation. How can we repay you for these, your gifts and graces, and for your goodness? As you have called us to approach this life-giving banquet, make us worthy. 
so that your body may be mingled with our bodies and your blood with our souls, for the pardon of faults, the forgiveness of sins, and for eternal life. You are blessed and your kingdom is holy. And we raise glory to you, to your Father and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Shlomo el Kulchunna. O oh God the Father, we bow before you and we entrust ourselves to your care. We ask you, imploring your mercy to rest your right hand full of blessings upon us. Assist us, protect us, bless us, and sanctify us by the cross of your only Son. We glorify and honor you, your only Son, and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. So it is always lovely to see you, and I wish you congratulations and thank you also for allowing yourselves to be gathered in to the Holy One. And at this moment of Kairos is just to mention to you that the latest Maronite voice has come out this week, so you'll find copies at both of the entrances of the church. God love you all and protect you. Go in peace, my beloved brothers and sisters, with the nourishment and blessings you have received from the forgiving of the Lord, from the forgiving altar of the Lord. May the blessing of the Most Holy Trinity accompany you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, the one God to whom be glory forever.